What to do? What to do? You know what? I think it's time. Do me a favor, take a look at the sculpts I've done for the channel so far. They all have something in common, or maybe it's more something they all lack. If you know Monster Hunter as a series, you probably already figured this out. That's right, it's wings. The Monster Hunter series has become very ecologically diverse over the years, especially in more recent entries. But there was a time when the main criticism from fans was that everything had wings. Everything was a wyvern or a dragon. Everything looked and acted mostly the same. While there were always exceptions, even now, it's safe to say that a fair majority of the monster roster has wings. But here's the thing about wings. They scare me. Now, I want this channel to be Monster Hunter focused, so eventually I'd have to tackle winged projects. There's no way around that. I mean, what kind of Monster Hunter channel would this be if I went and excluded the majority of its own roster? Not to mention clear fan favorites. No, I gotta rip this off like a band-aid. Bite the bullet, whatever term you wanna use. So why do wings scare me so much? Well. They're very thin, and they need to support weight without breaking. It's really that simple. And while Super Sculpey has surprised me time and time again with how durable it is, the thinner you go, the less true that becomes. However, in my last video, I introduced you all to Cosclay, which can be baked super thin and remain bendable without fear of breaking. Let me demonstrate. This test piece I made was made out of Cosclay and I made it on the very thinnest setting possible on my pasta machine. This one too. Pretty cool, huh? This, on the other hand, is Super Sculpey at the same thickness. Ouch. I think you see my point. Now, I've tested this stuff to the point where I feel confident in its use, so I think it's about time I faced my fears and got to work. But what should I sculpt? As I said previously, there's just so many options. And then it hit me like a Gen 1 tail swipe. My first sculpt, the Velocidrome, was chosen because it was the monster that taught me how to play the game. It was my sensei. So it only seems appropriate that my very first sculpt with wings should also be the first winged beast I ever took down on my monster hunting journey. The Kutku. Kutku is a mostly docile, mild-mannered, and curious monster. Until it isn't. That doesn't look very scary. More like a six-foot turkey. <laughs> hey! Shut up! So I think this is the perfect place for me to start. First thing I do is find a whole bunch of good quality reference images to help me be as accurate as possible. These will prove incredibly helpful as I move forward and... Hold up. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Monster Hunter community, we need to talk. Anyway, I was able to find a pretty good side profile shot. So I'm going to use that to create my armature. Just going to draw the skeleton as usual, so I know the general size and shapes I'm going to need. I also want to point out I'm using a thicker gauge wire than usual. This is what I've been using, and this is the new one. I'm curious to see how much of a difference this will make in the end. It's much more sturdy, which is great, but on the other hand, it's also more difficult to work with because of that, which you can kinda already see. Once the frame of the torso is where I want it, I fill the core with some foil, secure it with tape, wrap it up nice and tight. Then it's just a matter of getting the legs bent and attached to the body. I put some clay in the joints to hold them in place, then I wrap the torso with a thin layer of Sculpey 3. And since Kutku is bipedal, I need to bring out the wooden clamp base. From here, I can get things into position. Once gravity feels like it, that is. I put some foil on the wires, which helps settle things down a bit. Then I cover the legs in clay for good measure. This is the pose I'm going for. 
I think a pose like this perfectly matches Cutku's more curious nature, so that's why I chose it. I add a quick support so it won't droop in the oven as it heats up, and then I take it for its first bake. It feels solid enough, no sign of droopage. Now I can cover it in a base layer of Super Sculpey. Cutku is a very slender monster, so I don't want to add too much. In fact, I take this opportunity to start planning ahead and start working on anatomy, like the stomach area and the shoulder sockets where the wings will eventually go. Then I move on to the neck. Just cover it in foil, put some clay over top, and make sure to keep it as thin as possible. Then I fill out the shoulder gaps a bit to make the transition between the two look a bit more natural. Happy with what I got so far, I take the textured end of this tool and start rolling on some scales. Once I'm happy, I bake it again. Now that everything is locked in and feeling good, I move on to bulking out the legs. I just add strips of clay and work my way down, smoothing as I go. It's worth noting that the top half of his legs are much different than the bottom half, so I treat them as separate entities. For instance, the top half is covered in these bony armor plates. I decide to work on that first, so I take this shaper tool and start carving them out. Once done, I take my silicone shaper tool and smooth in between the lines, making the plates sort of pop out. Then I crumple up some foil and start dabbing on some texture. When all said and done, I think it looks pretty good. Before I forget, I apply the scale texture to the inner thigh and the rest of the leg too. And now I repeat this all on the other side. Bam! The second leg went much smoother. I sort of refined my method a bit and I think you can kind of tell the difference between the two, but it's not really a big deal. Speaking of not a big deal, working on that cut coo junk! Now I'm going to roll out some little clay worms and make the feet. As you can see, there's not really much going on, so I can keep them fairly simple. Once I have the size right, I make two, and then I add a bit of wire for some balance and stability purposes. I try to treat this like a shoe, so I can just slip it on and keep it in place with some bacon bond and added clay to make it permanent. I do this on both feet, and it worked great. No wobbling or separation. It all feels very secure and I had no issues. Using a ball stylus, I make indents for the nails, and then I add said nails. And this is what it looks like when it's done. I'm really happy that the toes sit mostly flush with the stand, as that really adds to the believability that this cut coup is actually standing on its own. Now I repeat the process on the other foot, then I texture everything up, After yet another bake, the toes still look and feel great. Honestly, this would have been impossible without the thicker gauge wire I'm using. Yeah, I'll be sticking with this going forward. So now I move on to what I guess would be its calf muscles. Fairly simple, just a couple globs of clay that I shape and smooth out appropriately. Then I add some armor plating and top it off with a spike. Oh, and then I had this idea to bulk the leg up a little bit. This was ill-advised, and I end up chopping it off later, but it's going to be there for a bit, so I had to address it. Before that, though, I add armor plating going from the toes all the way to the bottom half of the leg. After some cleanup, I start applying a scratched-up texture with one of my tools to make the armor seem worn. I do this on both legs before deciding I prefer the more slimmed down look of the second, so this is where I decide to tear down the added detail I just talked about. It not only looks better, but it's less I have to try and replicate, so really it's win-win. Now that the feet are done, I move up to the chests. Peck armor, for lack of a better word. I don't know, there's not much to it. It's just a block of clay that I cut to shape and carve into. Once I have these four quadrants, I begin rounding out the edges with a loop tool. And finally, I smooth everything out with a silicone shaper until I end up with this. Then I do all those steps again for these two additional portions, and after adding some wear and tear texturing, the chest armor is pretty much done. 
Once it's baked, I decide to do some painting. And yes, I know that sounds weird at this stage, but after doing some research and testing, I found out that acrylic paint can in fact go in the oven, pretty much without issue. You can cure it in the oven, or you can let it cure on its own beforehand. Either way works. If you cure it in the oven though, you run the risk of changing the properties of the paint and your colors might get messed up a bit because of it. If it's not obvious, I'm doing this now because once the wings are applied, painting this section will be nearly impossible. And if the colors did change a little bit, they'd be mostly covered by natural shadows anyway, so I think it was worth the risk. Speaking of which, it's about time I got started on those wings. Pray for me. I start by making my marks, drill some holes, and what do you know, the thick wire fits perfectly. We're off to a good start. Once I bend it into the right shape, I can easily replicate it with the second wing. Mostly. These wires are quite sturdy. It's a blessing and a curse for sure. I cover the wire in foil so clay will stick easier. Very nice. And for the fingers, or whatever you want to call them, I used that thinner wire wrapped around at one end. This worked out really, really well. And now for the webbing, aka my sleep paralysis demon, I roll out a very thin sheet of cosplay, making sure it's big enough to cover all the wire. Then I lightly tap my fingers, looking for the outlines of the wire. Once everything is found, I cut out the wing shape I'm looking for. Then I roll out another sheet of cosplay and use that wing I just made as a stencil to cut out what is essentially the second slice of bread for my wire sandwich. After smushing everything together again, I essentially have my first wing. And a second. They look good. They feel even better. My fear is beginning to subside a bit. After bending things into the shape I want, I think it's about time to see what they look like on the body itself. I gotta say, I really like how this is turning out. But there's more work that needs doing. So we're not out of the Moga Woods yet. I start by adding the arm parts. Sorry, I'm not a monster scientist. I don't know what else to call this. I chop off the excess and smooth things out as much as I can. Then I cover up the thin wire to make the fingers. Then I add the talons. Similar to how I did the feet. And with a thin tool, I roll some ridges into the arm parts. Then I take my foil texture stamp from before and start dabbing on all the haters. Then I bake it and the true test finally begins. Wow. I really like that. In fact, it's coming along so nice, I did it twice. And when both are attached to the body, hot damn. You see, the best thing about this and the biggest weight off my mind that doesn't come through on camera is how good this feels. See, I was very worried about the weight, but these things don't seem weighed down at all. The legs, the body, none of it feels stressed in any way. Now, there's still some worrying that needs to be done, but for now, everything's coming up Millhouse. I then added armor plating to the wings off camera. It was too difficult to get footage of it, so here I'm just adding the texture. The end result looks great though. Oh, and I almost forgot to add Kutku's little pinky toes, so I might as well get that done now before I move on. Contending with the wings and the tail later on would be a recipe for disaster, let me tell you. I think now is a good time to start the back shell. Not really much to say here. Other than adding a metric ton of bacon bond, it's just thick strips of clay that I carve and smooth out. I didn't catch much of this on film. I need a taller tripod. I didn't think of that beforehand, so that's on me. I tried to get all the progress milestones that I could though. Once I texture it all up, this is what I'm left with. Now, I'm gonna stop here and work on the tail. It'll be easier to finish off the rest of the back if I work, well, backwards from here. 
I start by extending the wire I had from the start. I kept it short so I could work without fear of losing an eye. Not that that would even matter. This is a Gen 1 monster we're talking about after all, and we all know that even the shortest Gen 1 tail can hit you from across the room. Is anyone else craving a milkshake? Anywho, once the tail is appropriately tail-like, I texture up the bottom, and on the top, I start placing down the armor plates. They go all the way from the tip to the start of the back. Chop off the excess and add texture. Then I smushed up tiny balls of clay and added these circular bony plates at the edges along both sides and dabbed them with some foil. Then I finish up the rest of the back and just like that, the body itself is mostly done. Next, I move on to the head sculpt. I crumple up some foil to act as a base. Then, I cover it fully in clay. After that, I start adding on the major sections of the head one at a time. The prominent lower jaw is the best place to start. I begin by marking an outline and cutting out what I don't need. Once I have the shape down, I bake it and move on to the upper jaw. I give it the appropriate details, bake it again, then add sections for the eyes, hollow them out, add the eyeballs, add the eyelids, and then finish up the remaining portions of the beak. Now I'm adding a spot for the ears, but that comes later. Then I add nostrils and some basic details around the ears, and I bake the head one last time. After that, I attach the head to the body, filling in all those gaps to make sure it's secure. Once it's in place, I can bulk up the neck a bit to better match the size of the head and add scales once I'm happy with it. Then I add the armor plates much like I did with the tail, texture them up, and again, like the tail, I add those circular bony bits. And now, it's time to fully attach the wings. It's now or never, baby. I just filled the gaps with clay and tons of bacon bond and it looks mostly seamless. This mostly went off without a hitch, actually. Even though it feels good now, I err on the side of caution and make damn sure those wings are fully supported and secured while they cook. It's been going so well up until now. If it broke apart at this late stage in the game, it would destroy my soul. While I wait for it to cook, and to settle my nerves a bit, I'm gonna work on those ears. I pretty much used the same method I used for the wings. Then I attached them to the back of the head. No big deal, really. Then I baked the whole model one last time. And, since I used cosplay, I can finally bend those ears to make them look more natural. And just like that, I present to you the fully complete sculpt of Yan Kutku. It's finally done, and I love where it's at. I'm so glad this all worked out, but you know we're not done just yet. It's time to paint. I start with a white base coat. Being a more colorful monster, white will really help those colors shine. Once that's done, I start on the full body base coat. As usual, it's best to put down darker colors for your base, so if you're wondering why I'm making the pink shell red, there's your answer. I decided to leave the wings alone for the time being, so the full body base coat is technically complete. From here, I start dry brushing my highlights. The ears are a bit different. I basically go back and forth with layers of brown, red, and tan until I get this. For the wings, I lay down a nice deep blue. After a few coats, I dry brush on a light blue that really doesn't show up on camera at all, sadly. 
Then I paint the fingers in the same shade of pink I used for the shell. Then I used yellow ochre and a brown dry brush on the small bony plates all up and down the neck and tail. Then I decided to tone down the skin a bit with a touch of brown. Then I painted the eyes and chin area a nice light blue before finishing those eyes off with a pale yellow. Finally, I paint a red streak across the top of the beak and head. And that about does it for the paint apps. All in all, I'm really happy with how this ended up. But there's just one more step left. Off camera, I painted up this simple base. And once it's attached, it's done. This was such a fun project. It's weird to think that I was so scared of this ever since I started this channel, and I continued to worry about it right up until the end. And I, uh, uh, um, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> I was so eager to get this done, and I, uh, I just, I just noticed something. I forgot his little rosy cheeks. Uh, two seconds. Yep, there you go. Aw, look at him blushing. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. And now it's done. First try. You saw nothing. I had a blast putting this guy together. I'm really happy with the level of detail I was able to get as well. It's also my most colorful sculpt to date, I think. It'll look great on my shelf. In my head, I had every terrible scenario possible playing out, all because of those damn wings. In the end, though, they look great, and I can honestly say right now, I'm no longer even slightly worried about their integrity. I took things really slow and really careful with this sculpt, but I can safely say that this has opened the door to a much more varied roster of possible projects. And that is a very good thing. I'm not sure where I'm gonna go next, but I do know that Cutku is complete. I think it's time to roll those glamour shots and get on out of here. another quest complete. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments, and let me know what you'd like to see me sculpt in the future, <laughs> winged or otherwise. While you're there, make sure you like that smash button and all that jazz. On that note, I think we're done here. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy sculpting!